and IMS protocol says apnea occurring in the first 24 hours and beyond 7 days of life is more likely to have a secondary cause than being apnea of prematurity. Now let us talk about AOP slightly more points. First of all, it is the apnea seen in preterm units usually less than 35 weeks due to immaturity of the brainstem and peripheral chemoreceptors. And there is an abnormal and incomplete ventilatory response to hypoxia as well as hypercarbia, but there is no underlying secondary cause for this abnormal response and it tends to improve as the gestational age of the child improves. What is the incidence and time of first presentation? We find that AOP shows inverse relation with gestational age and there is a 10 to 20 percent incidence at 34 weeks, more than 60 percent incidence for less than 28 weeks. Uh, more than 60 percent, actually uh, two textbooks talk in the range of 80 to 85 percent. AIMS protocol says more than 60 percent, so we are taking that very low. Most cases will present within day two to day six of life. So day two to day six, that is first week of life beyond 24 hours is the usual time of presentation. And uh, some patients delayed presentation, they can ask you in exam, what are the conditions where delayed presentation may be seen only if there is coexisting HMD, hyaline membrane disease or RDS, there can be a slightly delayed presentation. But isolated apnea in a premature child will always happen within two to six days if it is due to apnea of prematurity. And AIMS protocol says apnea occurring in the first 24 hours and beyond 7 days of life is more likely to have a secondary cause than being apnea of prematurity. What are the additional points that you need to remember? First of all, whenever bradycardia happens, it follows apnea by a gap of 1 to 2 seconds and it is mostly a sinus bradycardia followed by a AV nodal bradycardia. All preterm infants born less than 35 weeks, they need monitoring for AOP. So they can ask you what age group requires monitoring for AOP? The answer will be all preterm newborns less than 35 weeks. As I told you, AOP often shows mixed apnea with first there being obstructive apnea followed by the central apnea developing. AOP is a diagnosis of exclusion and uh, apnea in term infants usually warrants detailed evaluation. So whenever apnea happens in a term child, you need to investigate the child by multiple investigations as we shall see. And finally, apnea is found to be more common. These apneic episodes are more common in REM sleep compared to NREM sleep as shown by EEG recordings. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.